This is the Cone BMC tea of our patient for this morning. Um, this is a 69-year-old young lady that we'll be working on. And as you see, she's edentulous in the maxillary left um, span here, posterior span. In essence, the posterior teeth are gone. The goal is to ideally place an implant in the number 12 and 13 site, the maxillary left um, first and second bicuspid areas. And as you're going to see, the ridge is um, definitely on the narrow side, more of a division B ridge. Uh, almost a C-W, a little tough here to see. Here we are. We can get a better idea of the existing ridge right here. So if we use our measuring device, we'll go ahead and take a look at height. Height's not going to be an issue in the number 12 site for sure. As you see, we're approximately 12 millimeters uh, in height. Width is the, uh, is the concern. And we're looking at here uh, approximately 4.5 roughly at the largest area of width uh, in this section. Uh, it's a little bit less than that if we're more to the crust. Probably 3.5, I'm guessing, or thereabouts. Yeah. So. Uh, moving along, if in fact we uh, look at the number 13 site, the second bicuspid area, this ridge appears to be not quite as height, height-wise not quite as long, maybe 9, 9 plus millimeters if we go that direction. If we're looking a little bit more, let's just cancel that one out and go from roughly here. Yep, still about 9-ish. And uh, if we then look again, look at the width here, this looks a little bit loosened, but probably f about the same, 4442. Four, four, so again, we have, as we'll see intraoperatively, a couple options. One would be to ideally place both implants after splitting this ridge, which is the, the goal here is to go ahead and split this ridge and place two implants with... Um, simultaneous grafting, particularly grafting. The other part B of this would be, plan B would be more or less uh, split this only graft and not place in plants. And many times in these cases, I will not only split the ridge, but also perform a veneer graft for even enhanced augmentation uh, on the facial. So um, let's go ahead and see what things look like uh, here intraoperatively. So this is what things look like clinically. As you see, this ridge is uh, relatively narrow, even from a clinical perspective. Again, Division B, um, almost a C-W. But um, at any rate, uh, we have good attached tissue, good keratinized tissue, a little bit of a muscle pull right in here. Uh, and again, our phenotype is more or less a thick uh, phenotype. Incision design for this case will be mid-crustal. And I'll carry this distally. Uh, a fair amount, uh, I might end up releasing it just anterior to the tuberosity or go through the tube totally. Continuing it anteriorly, cellular. Ideally, an envelope incision only would be um, in order for the anterior segment uh, with a distal release only. But depending on what that ridge looks like, uh, especially if I'm going to do a veneer graft, uh, I might be looking at uh, releasing here in this anterior segment. And if I did that, it most likely would be right in this region. So let's begin with our 15C blade.
So here you see we've got primary closure now with again without tension our Augmentation as you can see is visible right in through here And we've got good primary closure throughout the crestal area and we'll show it to you better on the mirror So as you can see we've got great primary closure crestal closure with no problem and certainly can release quite a bit of uh, of the flap from the buckle only and uh, we'll be waiting now approximately uh, four months uh, for this augmentation to um, turn over for this graft to incorporate well enough for implant placement. And we'll reevaluate this with Combeam CT prior to implant placement.